Today we're going to look at 3.5, which is derivatives. Basically, we'll be comparing the average rate of change from the last lesson to um, the instantaneous rate of change. An instantaneous rate of change will basically be a description of a derivative. Okay, let's go back and look at the average rate of change. Here, we have a function, and let's say the input was using uh, x, and let's say time. And the output was y, was using distance. So, here, if I, in, uh, if I input zero time, I get zero distance. Here, let's say I'm inputting one hour and the distance will be 10 and put two hours the output ends up being 16 and put three hours output is 21 and finally let's say the fourth hour the output is 22 Using these time periods and the outputs here, uh, we're going to find um, several um, average rates of change. We'll find the average rate of change between the first second and the fourth, the first second, or first, first hour and the fourth hour, the third, first hour and the third hour, and the first hour and the second hour. So, finding the um, average rate of change is basically finding slopes. So, this will be um, 22 to 10 and 4 to 1. So for us, the average rate of change, um, let's say miles per hour. Between the first and fourth. The next will be 21 minus 10, 3 minus 1, which ends up being 11 or 2. And we can call that about. 5.5 miles per hour. And finally, from first hour to the second hour, 16 minus 10 over 2 minus 1 equals 6 over 1, 6. Okay. And again, all of these are average rates of change. And you notice that we're getting closer and closer to um, one second. We have the time period bef between one and four, the time period between one and two, one and three, the time period between one and two. Question, what would be the uh, rate of change be at one alone? Okay. Now, this is a curious question because we're no longer looking at um, chords or slopes that go from one point to another. Okay, these are chords right here. We're no longer looking for these slopes. Now we're looking for the slope that comes from a line that goes through a single point. And these lines that will go through a single point are called tangents. Okay. Now the problem with a tangent, tangents, because they only hit one point, 
you cannot find, you cannot use this method here of using two points in order to get the slope. So the method that we're going to use to get the slope of these tangents would be finding the slopes of these chords, 1 to 4, 1 to 3, 1 to 2, and then get even closer by going from maybe 1 to 1.5, maybe 1 to 1.1, 1, .1, 1 to 1.001, and look at the answers of the um, average rates of change. And the answers will start to get closer and closer to a single number. Once we kind of see the pattern and what number is getting closer and closer to, we would assume that that number is going to be the instantaneous rate of change at the point one itself. So we're going to look for the instantaneous rate of change by looking at average rates of change getting closer and closer and closer to the single point here. Now, this idea of getting closer and closer uh, to a single point um, is what we call a derivative. Okay, now, to find the derivative, which is the instantaneous rate change at a single point, we're going to use the average rate of change. gives us the average rate of change between two points, the point A and the point A plus H. Okay. And let's say I want the, the uh, rate of change at simply A, at just A alone, at that tangent point. What I need to do is start finding arcs um, that are closer and closer to A by making H smaller and smaller, making H 0.1, and then maybe making H 0 0.01, 0 0.0001, and the new arcs that I'll be getting will get closer and closer to the single point A and will eventually give me the instantaneous rate of change. So, the average rate of change is found by Make, finding this slope, the inst instantaneous rate of change uses the same formula from the average rate of change, but the h's will get smaller and smaller. And we demonstrate that by saying we're looking for the limit as h approaches zero or h gets smaller and smaller. Okay, this process of finding the instantaneous uh, rate change is also described as the derivative of the function at a. This is basically saying we're finding the instantaneous rate of change at a single point a. It's basically another slope um, but it's a slope at a tangent line as opposed to over two points. It's simply at one 